We looked at an Acasis single M.2 enclosure that's USB 4 Thunderbolt 3, and now we're going to look at a dual enclosure that supports RAID. Very interesting. So this is going to be for a very specific user who needs a lot of storage and a lot of power. It'll support up to two 8 gigabyte M.2 NVMe drives. Now, Acasis, the reason that I think that they are a little bit special compared to a lot of the other ones is that they have very awesome cooling solutions. The M.2 in here, they do run fast, but with their cooling solutions, they run cooler than pretty much anything I've tested internally on any system. And that's because they have a lot of thermal mass that sits on top of the M.2. I use OEM keys for a few different reasons. This is the price you're going to pay for Windows 11 Pro. If you get a retail key, let's check those prices on whokeys.com. $30 and we can do better. Put in TS25, click apply. There we go. $23.22. Let's say you want to get a copy of Windows 10 Pro. Let's click on buy it now. Coupon code TS25. Hit apply and watch that price come down. There we go. So the other thing is OEM keys are generally locked to your hardware. So if you move it from one motherboard to another, you may need to get another key, but you'll have to get many, many, many keys to equal the price of of one retail key. If you need Office, you're also going to be able to get those same deals. 25% off on Office 2019 and 2016. These are offline versions of Office without monthly fees. Let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro. All right, just put in my card info. There we go. Click on View Keys and Codes. Once you get to the User Center, click on Get the Key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, hit Start, type Activate, click on Activation Settings, paste it in there, click on Next, and you will be activated. Also, everything over here is on sale and TS25 is gonna work. So head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. So before I go through all the ports, I wanna talk about the actual casing. This is a metal housing and it comes apart. There's a magnetic uh, release, that you, it's very firm. So you, you pop it apart and then you can put both your M.2 in there. Now it comes with two different thermal pads with different levels of thickness, depending on you know how thick the NAND flash is on your M.2. So you can get like eight terabyte drives that are maybe a little bit thicker. Use the thinner thermal pads. And then you take the top and smash it right back down on there and you're getting um, you know a lot of contact with this big metal surface area for heat dissipation it's going to pull all the heat out of the m.2 into that metal and then on top of that they put a fan there you're going to see in the testing that this stays extremely cool all the time now let's talk about the rest of the case and uh, see what we got there now there's an on and off switch for the fan right beside your power delivery so it's got a 100 watt power input right there and you're going to probably need that to get everything up and running so you got a 100 watt power delivery and that can also transfer over to external monitors, which is nice. You can daisy chain some monitors and daisy chain other M.2, just whatever. You've got some ports and stuff. Now with the USB 4, it does support a single screen, 8K at 60 hertz. So you can get some extreme performance and you can do all that while also using your M.2. And I found that turning the fan on and off, only a little bit of difference. So if you don't want the noise of the fans, it does have a high pitched whir, just press the button and turn it off and it's still gonna be cooler than most of the M.2 that's inside your system. So that's very interesting. It supports M.2 in sizes 2230, 2242, and 2260, as well as 2280, which is what we have here. And they have to be NVMe. It doesn't support the SATA protocol. Now we do have an HDMI port and I'm gonna show you this thing plugged up to a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I put this under my desk so I could hook it up to a whole bunch of things. I've got an HDMI port down there. So excuse the under the desk mess shot, but I wanted to show it plugged up to both an HDMI display running at 1080p. It'll support up to 4K. And then on the other side, I'm using USB-C that I'm using to plug up to a display. So you can see we have on the other side there two USB 4.0 and those are 40 gigabits per second. Also Thunderbolt uh, as well, Thunderbolt 3. So then on the one side, the little image of like the, the screen, that's what you plug up to your PC or your laptop. And then on the other side, you can daisy chain another Thunderbolt enclosure, another you know USB 4 enclosure, 40 gigabits per second, or another display that you can do 4K. On the side, we have USB type A, that's 3.1 and that's 10 gigabits per second. So you have a lot of options with all of that. So this one works with Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 3, and USB 4. And it's gonna be compatible with MacBooks, MacBook Pros, MacBook Airs, Mac Mini, Surfaces. Uh, it's gonna be compatible with Windows, like stuff like your Dells. Um, it's gonna be compatible with, it's also compatible with iPads. So you got Windows, Mac OS, and also Linux support. So pretty much everything, it's plug and play, it works. Now the way this works is we have the 40 gigabits per second through the USB 4 but that's split between the two M.2 slots. So each one of those can do a max of 20 gigabits per second. Um, and we'll show you in the tests about how much you get with that. Now, the cool thing is here is you can be reading and writing 
to both drives at the same time. And since they each have their own, you know, provisioned stuff, well, it doesn't affect the other drive. It just works. I was able to test both of these at the same time and get the same results. While I'm testing the uh, one terabyte drive over here, I'm testing that with Atto Disk Benchmark. I'm using Crystal Disk to test the other one at the same time. And the write speeds are the same, so it's sharing the USB 4 quite nicely. I'm getting, you know, as expected. And both of the drives stayed right around 40 something the entire time, meaning that the cooling solution is very effective having the fan in there. Giant heatsink plus fan plus thermal pads is working just fine. The system that I'm testing, the airflow is not as good. And it's just idling my C drive is 56 versus these two while doing the tests. Amazing in my opinion, like 43 degrees. This cooling solution is awesome. Like really, really, really good cooling solution. Yeah, as soon as it's done, it's right back down. This is ridiculous. So yeah, the cooling solution is a 10 out of 10 for me. And it's not very loud. You do hear it. I'm going to turn the fan off and test it one more time. All right, like I said, these two tacks the most. So let's see how warm it gets with no fan, just with the thermal mass sitting there on top of the M.2. I expected higher than this, but that is a pretty big heat sink. Probably during the right, we'll get higher than 40 something. It should be much hotter. I don't understand. The fan doesn't help all that much. That's interesting. All right, you know what? I'm gonna try to generate a lot of heat in there. So I'm gonna set this one to test one drive and this one to test another. Let's start generating some heat, shall we? Now we're testing both of these drives with no fan turned on to see how hot it gets. And we're doing it at the same time. All right, yeah, look at this. This is generally the part of the test that's going to tax it the most. And we're at 44 and 40. So um, the fan maybe helps a tiny bit, but I think I might just leave it off. This is totally fine. As long as you get that thermal pad on there, and all that thermal mass sitting on top, it's like, okay, well, this one's done, so. And as you can see, we're getting almost the same, you know, read and write speeds for both drives at the same, you know, testing them at the exact same time. All right, so yeah, even without the fans, 10 out of 10 when it comes to the cooling on this unit. Both the drives, also, you gotta note that these are not extreme speeds. What's really interesting is the entire case is really warm. Like I just finished all the tests and it's, I mean, it's not crazy, but it's the entire thing is warm. And that is, that's actually what I wanna feel because that means that the entire case is being used to dissipate heat. So I'm gonna crack this open real quick. Now, M.2 tend to come out, there we go, just like that because they're stuck to the top. But yeah, that's what we have right there. Just all of that thermal mass. I guess the entire thing is like pretty much one big piece right here. And it's just sucking that heat away from these. So yeah, there we go. Thermal pads do kind of stick to it a little bit so they get wonky. You'll have to like watch for that, but I don't think you'll be like opening this thing up all the time like I am right now, you know? All right, so these little things are not easy to get in there. I've tried some other brands of drives that have rubber grommets, but they have like a little turning mechanism to lock them into place. That would be better. These are really difficult to get into place and they feel like they're gonna just flop out, but there we go. Got it back in there. If you want the full speed of your M.2, you're going to need to get two identical M.2. I don't have that right now, but it, you know, it works with software rates. So if you want to get the full 40 gigabits per second uh, and be able to get like 35 to 37, um, 3700 megabytes per second, well, you're going to need to do RAID. So if you, that's something you're serious about, it'll do RAID 1 and RAID 0 with software. And sorry, I couldn't test that, but you can see the potential of what you could get. Just double up the performance of what you get with one drive and you'll be able to get that with both drives on RAID. It may not be a perfect doubling, but you'll get a good performance boost. All right, so for me, the Casus enclosures are the best things that I've found. Um, and I've been using the single enclosure for a little while now. I like the fact that it has a few more ports for like displays and stuff, and it's only a single enclosure. So you get a higher speed for the one you know, M.2. But if you need the dual M.2, this is a good way to go. So it's all depending on what you need for, you know, how you're working. And now they do have a 20% off code and you can copy that. It's TB20, which will give you a decent deal. Really, you just sit back and ask yourself, do you want one M.2 or do you want two M.2? The other benefit to this one, and I wish the other drive had it, but this one has an on and off switch for the fan. It would be really cool in the future if we can get an on and off switch for uh, another version that's a single M.2 for people who want to be able to turn off that fan because it's got a lot of thermal mass and it stays cool. So yeah, 
Anyway, Acasis, great job on this one. Great job on the other one as well. These are really nice enclosures. Now the power input is 100 watts. Some of that's gonna to go to the M.2, but you have 60 watts for fast charging or to plug up like an external monitor or something like that. So you got 60 watts right there, but the 100 watts is what the power input will take. Now, I like to use a powerful power input, like a laptop charger or something works just fine. Just any high powered USB-C charger. So I'm doing 50% off, save the shelves is the coupon code. 50% off on everything I have stocked here that doesn't include the print on demand or the used gear. They got a lot of awesome t-shirts over there and they are super premium, super soft. The ink, uh, the process that we do with our ink actually dyes the shirt. So it doesn't, it doesn't feel all plasticky and everything. Like when you touch it, it feels smooth and everything. So, and also I want to mention that I've got a bunch of stuff. I'm just clearing out everything. Monitors, computers, hundreds of dollars under the retail cost. And these are, you know, I test them out and then that's pretty much it. So head over to epicpants.com. Got a bunch of stuff over there. I know this is a kind of a way to sneak uh, a little promo in, but you know, this mouse right here, this is as good as anything out there. Mm -hmm.